What's up everybody? Welcome to the 2300 Gear Jammer channel. If you're new, you missed out. In the last couple of videos, I assembled the engine, I put all the clutch and transmission stuff together, got the engine in, everything is hooked up, worked through a couple of issues, the cooling system leaked, and uh, since then I primed the fuel system, it leaked too, so I fixed a couple of fittings. But everything's pretty much done, we should be able to start it today. When I, I work through those problems, I always give it an extra day before I try to start it, just to make sure that I haven't missed anything. And in the last video, I asked people to put their questions in the comments. So we're going to work through some of that in just a minute. But first, before I forget, I've got t-shirts coming. So check the store, gearjammershop.com. That stuff's coming. We're probably going to do a pre-order on the next bunch, but I will let you know more about that in the next video. So that's on the way. Be looking for that. So let's go to the questions. So I got all kinds of questions. And some of them are repeats, but I'm just going to scroll through and, and we'll see what we're working with here. All right. Thunder TC88 says, I'm just here for the idle video. Thanks, but you gotta hang on. Uh, we're gonna get to some of the other questions first. So uh, I got Trevor here, he was actually sitting in there. How about you do some of them? All right. Boosted74M2 asks, what's the details on your intake manifold and how much nitrous are you spraying? All right, this intake is the number one question that I get all the time. And uh, it was made by a fellow in North Carolina who said after great effort, that he would never do another one. It was a, a huge pain. And the way 2.3 cylinder heads work, so the number two and three cylinders are kind of a straight shot. And then the number one and four are angled and they're both angled different directions. And the guy kind of built all that into this intake. So he did a really good job. And uh, an Excel spreadsheet was built to try to tune runner lengths for frequencies. And it ended up with an 11 inch runner and basically it's the longest runner you can fit and the biggest plenum and the plenum is a Ross machine racing D shape the four and a half inch one that you can get on eBay 75 millimeter BBK throttle body and the injectors are a 50 motorsports black ops the 1400 CC ones It worked out with the spreadsheet But the car didn't really go any faster So what I really think about this intake compared to a hand ported stock intake it's no real big difference. So I will try to uh, get this thing on the dyno. If our friend with the engine dyno has got some time, I might be able to swap back and forth between the stock ported intake and this thing, and we'll be able to see that way. It's really hard to do with the track. It's not quite enough time to get through it, but we might be able to get that done. As for the nitrous, I've only sprayed it on the dyno. Um, I'll put the jets up on the screen because I have to go look. I can't remember what jets they were. Nitrous and fuel jets were a 22 and a 16 for an 85 shot, something like that. It made 91 horse on the dyno just on the wastegate, so I suspect that will easily add 100 horse or so. And I don't want to spray it going down the track until I've got another engine plan in place. So I want to get it completely perfect down the track on boost and then turn the boost up until when I can't do any more, then we might turn the nitrous on and see what happens. But for now, we're going to run it on motor. WV Ragtop wants to know, how did you decide on a 108 degree intake centerline? Was it a custom grind? All right, intake centerline, that's a good question. So how did I get to that point? Um, when I got the shoulder head done from Bo the last time, he cleaned it up and he went to a little bit bigger cam. He picked it. I just said, let's go to a bigger cam. And it showed up. I bolted the thing on and uh, I think I started at 110 degrees and just to get some place to start start running it at the track and moved it around just to see what it liked. 108 degrees is a spot where I know it'll 60 foot and it'll go down the track pretty hard. So that's gonna be where we run it. What's next? Velociranger wants to know, would you ever consider building a motor for someone else or do you just build your own? Definitely not. The liability is enough that I wouldn't wanna do it. I've run the guts out of these things. So I took my time with this one. We're gonna throw some garbage two threes together just to see how tough they are this year. So. Follow along with that. Good luck finding somebody to put yours together. Corey Cuisenberry asks, can you make me a video going through the PIMP ECU and maybe some tuning videos? All right, PIMP install is on the list. I couldn't decide if I wanted to do that because I always fumble with the laptop, but that's helpful too. You know, we'll go through where you look for answers and we should be able to do that. I will add that to the list if enough people like this video and uh, maybe we'll put one on the Pinto. Your sister Mustang asks, if you move the motor back two inches, does it not affect the drive shaft fitment? That's a good question. For the drive shaft, I sent them the measurement with the engine already set back 
and it's got a really long slip yoke. So I've tried it where I move the engine forward and leave the same drive shaft in it and uh, it works completely fine. It's just not optimal. Move forward though, I can run a stock Mustang drive shaft. Works out perfect. So I've got some options there. But typically I just run the same drive shaft. I think that's it. It might be time to try to start this. I'm pretty nervous. We got oil pressure. Let's add fuel. We got fuel pump. Close. I mean, you hear it wants to run, right? That's something. All right. Moment of truth. Should go. Or explode. One more. Come on now. Why are you making that face? <laughs> right as he read it and it died, three washers rolled out from underneath the car. Really? Oh, you weren't joking. <laughs> oh, hey. Well, hey, I told you they would find their way home. Could not have been any more perfect. <laughs> the second it died, they came rolling out. <laughs> hey, it runs. That bolt's loose. We'll push that back to tight. <laughs> but it's leaking water. Again, from the same exact spot it was leaking water before. So that's all right, easy fix, same fitting. I'll fix that and we'll be good to go. That's it though, it's running. So what kind of fuel is it running on? That is, it, it's kind of a mix of 87 and I had some Q16 that ended up in, in the big tank. Uh, so we were just running on 87 mostly just then. My gosh, it, it is burning my eyes though. I turned the exhaust fan on about halfway through, but I am, uh, it is pretty hard to believe. That is some nasty fuel, so for sure. I think I've been cutting some onions or something. Yeah, it is, it is pretty bad. 
What's what's with the mil spec connector that's not hooked up there? Uh on the firewall? Yeah. Oh, so the engine harness where all the injectors are, I run an air charge temp sensor in this tube here, and fuel pressure is data logged here, and I ran a single wire for each thing. It is one wire unbroken all the way to the, to the pimp that's in the factory location, which is on the kick panel on this side. I didn't want to interrupt any wiring, so the only way to unhook this is to go through and unhook every sensor individually. I wanted to make it run through the firewall where you could quick disconnect one harness. And since this was a test harness that I built in like 2013 that I'm still running, at some point I'd like to make it where I can run this harness on a dyno. But uh, maybe, I don't know, I gotta build a new harness for this thing. We'll see, I, I'm not really sure how I wanna do it. I may run th everything through that one connector that you're talking about there, right there, kinda hard to see. There we go. I may run everything through that and then we can have quick disconnects and then I can build a couple of engine harnesses that all match. And then I can have a dyno harness that's that I can plug the same engine harness into. So we might be able to do it that way. We'll see. That's it, I'm gonna call it a day. My eyes are burning. These contacts are gonna go straight in the trash when I get home. That's a solid day though, we got it running. I uh, went through a heat cycle, I let it run for a little bit while the camera was off. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy, fixed my one leak. It's got oil pressure still, it runs pretty smooth. I said in the last video I got to fix uh, the throttle cable a little bit and um, it's pretty solid. Do a little wiring and this thing is pretty much ready to go down the track. I've got a checklist that I'll go through but uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, don't forget to check the store gearjammershop.com. Put additional questions in the comments and we'll get to them as we go along. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.